What up guys, Fighting Therapist here. We were back in Montreal. Last week I was out for vacation. If you haven't seen, follow my Instagram page. Actually both of them, because I share them both. One is more therapy and training based, and the other one is more of a personal page. We're back in the city, it's nice and cold, minus two today. A little bit of a pre-workout breakfast that kinda not like a real breakfast, because I did not have a chance to go to the store and get some extra food, so this is all that we had left. Some butter, like very light butter, and some jam. It's kinda one bagel, two bagel. Same thing, because I'm gonna go hit the gym today. This is the purpose of the video. Oh, and we got a protein shake. I wanna take you guys through a squat warm-up routine, kind of what it entails, what parameters you wanna include within your squat warm-up. I'm gonna cover all that today in this video. As well, we're gonna cover up what is the optimal stance for you individually when it comes to your specific anatomy, your limb length, your height. But right now, I got a couple of clients that I gotta handle right now. They got some treatments, a little bit of injuries that we gotta fix up. Eat that nice bagel protein shake breakfast, and I'll catch you guys when we're at the weightlifting gym. So I'll see you in a few. So I'm back at the house and it's actually the next day. As I was going through the footage, the music in the gym was extremely loud and I was gonna get copy written or I'm gonna get a copyright infringement. Even with the external mic and how close it was to my uh, mouth, it's still super loud, so I thought I'd just go over it right now. So right off the bat, I want to show you guys what is the most proper stance for your anatomy. And that's going to be based off two things. The depth of your hip socket, as well where that hip is placed, either anterior or posterior. So a simple test that you guys can do, like the first one that you see me doing, I'm sitting down just on a box, my legs are dangling just a little bit, and I'm gonna put my leg into internal and external rotation. I'm gonna repeat that test on my stomach, which you see me doing right here. From there, if I show that I have tremendous amount of external rotation, both seated and prone, then it's better off that I have a more wider stance with a little bit of more external rotation in my feet due to me having more of a retroversion type of hit socket. Just means that if this was my hip, Instead of it sitting nicely in the middle, it's a little bit more backwards and angled out to the side, which is why this feels more comfortable for me. So when I'm going into my squat pattern, I actually feel a lot better. Now the reverse can be true. Let's say if I had more internal rotation, both seated or prone, then I would have more anti-version. So my hip would be a little bit more in front and it'll be angled a little bit on the inside, which is why people that squat with their feet straight pointing forward, they feel great and they have great squat depth. Now the Next question that I get asked a lot is how deep should you go or how deep can you go? Two things here. The main one is going to be anatomy. So how deep that hip socket is or how shallow you are. A simple test you can do is to lay on your stomach and bring your knee to your chest. If you cannot bring your knee to your chest, you cannot go that deep. So there's going to be a limit of how low you can go. Then this kind of goes into my second point. Mobility can still be achieved. We can still practice mobility and we can still work on that hip depth through some tightnesses and balances and everything like that. So those are going to be the two main things when it comes to how low you should go in the squat and where your feet should be pointing in or out. Now, when it comes to warm up, so this is the second part of the video, like what should you warm up? Should you just go on the bar and kind of do some sets and work up to your top set? I prefer doing a warm up because then you're just not really going to optimize your chance of doing the best that you can in your squat again, without hurting yourself. So the couple of things that I like to focus on just in general is gonna be hip external and internal rotation as well as ankle dorsiflexion. So really getting that knee over my ankle as much as I can. So in the first exercise that you see here, we're just gonna put our foot up on a box. We're gonna load that with a little bit of some isometrics. I really wanna feel the stress on that posterior Achilles and calf as well. Sometimes you might feel some pinching on the anterior portion of your talus joint so right where that foot is so if this is your tibia that would be your ankle you might feel some pinching there that is due to that mobility of your talus joint not being able to move properly when that tibia is coming forward so i keep it simple i do about two sets of eight reps on each foot with about a three to five second hold after that i like putting that in more of a squat warm-up so usually i just take a loaded kettlebell i put it a little bit more anterior i come down in a low squat and i'm just going to hold Sometimes it could be 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I've worked my way up to about a minute, just really shifting the weight back and forth between each foot. Again, working on that dorsiflexion and loading my ankles. Next here, you're gonna see me do about two sets on my left leg and one set on my right leg. Now, this is very specific for me. So I, like I said, have a lack of internal rotation on my left labrum due to my tear. And because of those compensatory patterns, I'm starting to develop a lack of external rotation on my right hip due to me compensating when I come deep in the pocket. You'll see a little bit of that hip shifting 
um, in the video when we start loading the weight. So for me, I like doing a two to one ratio when it comes to limited range of motion in a unilateral aspect. So like you can see, left leg is not that great. So we're gonna do two sets of internal rotation for my left hip, and we're gonna do one set on my right hip, but then vice versa comes when we're gonna work on external rotation. I do two on my right leg and I do one on my left leg. Now, another great exercise you can add into like, let's say this type of warm up where I'm working my ankle, I'm working my hip, is some Peterson step downs or some heel taps. So you're gonna go into a one legged squat, you're gonna put a elevated platform, let's say anywhere between two to as high as 20 inches. Again, you wanna work your way down and then work up. And you're just gonna come down, squat on that leg, heel tap the floor, come back up. We're trying to make sure that we're loading that glute properly, loading that foot complex with the ankle, making sure that the tibia is coming over as we come lower. And just a nice progression to warm up and start activating the right musculature. So when we go into our loaded squat, we feel a lot better and we're actually working the muscles that we need to. Now, there's so many different warm up routines. I didn't want to start doing about 10 exercises in this video because there is no reason for it. If you guys do want hip mobility exercises or just routine, follow my Instagram. The link's down below. I have a lot of videos for a whole bunch of different aspects when it comes to the hip, the knee, the ankle, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. So go check that out. I try to post every day. It's been a little slow lately because I'm doing my master's degree, which is another thing that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys on this channel. But go check out my Instagram page for a whole bunch of exercises that you can do. Now, the second thing people ask, how many warm up sets should you do or should you just go load the weight and kind of work it? I believe that working your muscle and getting that mind muscle connection, getting used to the weight and feeling how it is on your back and gradually putting more and more and more up on that bar. Again, respecting your RPE range or your IRI range of what you have set for that program or that week, that microcycle, whatever it may be. For me, I'm putting as much weight as I can on the bar where I feel that there's an RPE eighth going on there. Warm up sets, I usually stick to about two to three warm up sets. Sometimes I even go up to four when it comes to the heavier weight. And then my top sets can be anywhere between two to four top sets. And then that would be pretty much just my squat or my deadlift, whatever the exercise may be. I usually do anywhere between two to three, sometimes four, and then two to four working sets. It really just depends on what my mesocycle or what my program looks for that time. Right now, my program is higher volume. So I'm working up almost to 10 sets total. This is including the warm up sets and the working sets. So that's where I'm at, but it doesn't mean that that's what you have to be doing. I'm just telling you where I am in my program. And squats is probably one of my weakest points along with bench press. This is the first time ever in about 20 years that I actually get to just do weight training alone where I'm not doing pretty much any cardio at all. I'm doing two jujitsu and wrestling classes a week and I'm doing maybe one sparring a week or pad work. That's it. The rest is steady state cardio about two to three a week. That's like super low for me. I'm used to two a days with MMA, with weights, strength and conditioning, aerobic classes, extra drilling days. Like that's usually what I'm so used to. So now the time for me to kind of take back, work on the injuries that I have, get a lot stronger so that later next year, summer, when I'm done with my master's degree, school is completely out of the picture. I don't have to think about it anymore. I can just focus on fighting and then work on signing my pro contract. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Please write a comment, write what, what do you think. Maybe you have some questions. What other mobility drills can you do? Maybe you're having some issues when you squat so we can actually really focus on that. Let me know what you guys think. I really hope you guys did join that video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'll definitely catch you guys in the next video. Ciao.